Hey guys, today let's talk about 10 facts regarding Darth Krayt. Starting in at number 1, Darth Krayt's Jedi Father. Now in Legends, the future Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Krayt, like Anakin Skywalker, had once been a Jedi, but before that, the powerful Sith was raised as a Tusken Raider. His father had been a highly respected Jedi named Sharad Het, who had exiled himself from the Jedi Order during the decades of relative galactic peace prior to the invasion of Naboo. After his family and millions of his people had been wiped out on his home world, Het left the Jedi and the Republic to live out the remainder of his life on the desert planet of Tatooine. He became friendly with the usually xenophobic and aggressive Tusken Raiders and was eventually accepted into their tribe as one of their own. As a Tusken, he fathered a child, a son named Asharad, with another human member of the clan. For the next 15 years, his son was raised as a Tusken Raider and even managed to kill a mighty crate dragon. However, unfortunately, Het made his end when he crossed paths with the former Jedi Padawan turned bounty hunter, Aura Singh. Soon after, the Jedi Master Ki Adi Mundi took Het's son back with him to the Jedi. Number 2. A Tusken Jedi. Asherad, who remained in his Tusken Raider clothing, mask, and all, became Ki Adi Mundi's Padawan. But he could never forget what Aura Singh had done to his father. So when on a fateful mission, he came across her and they fought. But this time, it was the bounty hunter who lost. Though tempted to give in to his anger, Asharad was able to resist the dark side and didn't kill her. Instead, he took his father's murder and turned her over to the Jedi Council. He then asked to be released from his apprenticeship to Kiadi Mundi because he felt shame at giving in to his anger and wanted to put himself into self-exile just like his father had done before him. But instead, an enigmatic Jedi Master called the Dark Woman, who had once been Aura Singh's master, took Asharad as her new Padawan and he continued his Jedi training until he eventually ascended to the rank of Jedi Knight. Number 3. Covering for Anakin Skywalker During the Clone Wars, Asherad, who had been at the Battle of Genosis, took part in several important campaigns throughout the war, including the Battle of Jabim, where he befriended another Jedi who had grown up on Tatooine, Anakin Skywalker. Obi-Wan was missing at this point, presumed dead, and the young man was in need of guidance and companionship. But following the battle, the two sometime later led the defense on the planet Argonar, where they crashed behind enemy lines. Wanting to bond over their similarities, Asherad paid Obi-Wan's powerful apprentice a compliment, but made the mistake of telling him that he would have made a fine Tuscan, not realizing that Anakin's mother had recently been tortured and killed by a tribe of raiders. Anakin went into a fit of rage. He ignited his blue lightsaber and attacked Asherad. Though the Tusken was very strong in the force and was a Jedi Knight and Anakin was still just a Padawan, Asherad was still overwhelmed by Anakin's might. The angry young man had just slashed at him mindlessly and would have killed him if Asherad had not managed at the last moment to kick Anakin in the face, knocking him on the ground momentarily. The Chosen One snapped out of it and calmed himself down. Ashamed of himself, Anakin confessed what he had done to the tribe of Tuscans who killed his mother. Taking in what the troubled Padawan was telling him, Asherad removed his mask for the first time, revealing to Anakin that he was human. Having bonded over their vulnerabilities, Asherad vowed to Anakin that he would keep his secret, hoping the Padawan would resolve his issues and gain closure, a decision that he would come to regret. From that moment on, Asherad never wore his Tuscan clothes again for the duration of the war, deciding instead that he was neither just a human or a Tuscan, but he was a Jedi. Number 4. Return to Tatooine When Order 66 was activated and the Jedi Purge began, Asherad was away from any of the clone troopers and so was completely in the dark of what had just taken place. He returned to the Jedi Temple and when the clones attacked him, he slayed them all, except one who he kept alive to find out what had happened. Afterwards, he believed himself to be the only Jedi to remain alive, and so returned to his tribe on Tatooine and became a Tusken again, eventually becoming the head of many Tusken clans. Number 5. Fighting Obi-Wan Kenobi Embracing the Tusken lifestyle once again, Asherad had raised an army of Tuskens and engaged in several raids across Tatooine against off-world settlers and moisture farmers. But during one particular raid, he came too close to the Lars homestead and was surprised to 
encounter Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. The former High Council member told the Tusken ex-Jedi that his raids were just him fueling off of his need for revenge, and he was only hurting innocent people. Obi-Wan tried to use his infamous negotiating skills to reach Asherad, but the Tusken warlord refused to listen, so the two engaged in a lightsaber duel. The vicious fight ended with Kenobi chopping off Asherad's right arm and removing his mask in front of the other Tusken clans. Now, to expose any part of your skin was forbidden in Tusken culture, and with only one arm, well, Asherad would now never again be able to wield the Gaderfi which was the traditional weapon of the Tuscans. Without a word uttered, the clans turned away and departed, as Obi-Wan had just made Asherad an outcast. Though he pleaded with Obi-Wan to finish him off, Kenobi refused and instead made him swear on the honor of his late father that Asherad would leave Tatooine forever and never return. The Jedi Master hoped that he would one day rediscover the Jedi way, but unfortunately, that was not the path. Asherad was on. Number 6. Sith Training No longer a Jedi and now exiled from Tatooine and the Tuscans, Asherad traveled the galaxy aimlessly. When he learned of Darth Vader's true identity, he was shocked and then, remembering their duel back in the Clone Wars, felt remorseful and full of guilt. If he had either killed Skywalker in their fight or reported him to the Council, the whole galaxy could have been saved. Angry and depressed, Asherad, in a bitter twist of fate, decided to follow in the footsteps of his father's killer and became a bounty hunter. Which was how he went through life for a while, until one fateful bounty brought him to Korriban, the ancient Sith homeworld. He killed his quarry but then heard a voice calling to him in the Force, so he followed it. Eventually coming across the tomb of Zozan, who had been among the eleven exiled Jedi who had become the First Lords of the Sith thousands of years ago. Her holocron's avatar told Asherad that she had been waiting for someone like him, and offered to teach him the ways of the ancient Sith. Asherad reasoned that he would use the holocron to learn new abilities in the Force, so he would be able to challenge Darth Vader and the Emperor, so he could free the galaxy from their evil. So he agreed, but when years later he emerged from his training, he was surprised to learn that the Empire was collapsing, as Vader and the Emperor had been defeated at the Battle of Endor. Number 7. Becoming the Dark Lord of the Sith With no enemy to enact his revenge against, Asherad decided to lose himself in the Unknown Regions. But he was captured by advanced scout ships from the extragalactic species known as the Yuzon Vong. Imprisoned and tortured endlessly in their embrace of pain, the Vong experimented on him and replaced his cybernetic arm with an organic one made by their shapers. They removed his left eye and replaced it with that of a creature from their galaxy. During all this, Asherad met another ex-Jedi and former secret acolyte of Darth Sidious, named Vergir, who had gone missing from the Jedi before the outbreak of the Clone Wars. She had joined the Vong years ago, but saw a great deal of potential in Asherad, so she taught him how to use his suffering to open himself up to the dark side, which gave Asherad a vision of his new Sith Order. He came to believe, through his conversations with Vergir, that a singular was needed to make this fractured and weak galaxy strong and whole again. And that singular will belong to him. In time, he managed to break out of the embrace of pain and destroyed the Yuzong Vong ship that had held him captive for so long, as he made his escape back to Korriban. That was where Asherad took the name Darth Krait, as a tribute to the fearsome Tatooine beasts, the Krait Dragons. Number 8. Rule of One for his new Sith Order, Darth Krait abolished the Rule of Two, that had defined Darth Bane's Sith Order for a thousand years. Instead, Krait enacted the Rule of One. There would be one Sith Order, but many underlings within it. Gathering followers in secret as he built up his power base on Korriban, Darth Krait waited for the time that he was ready to strike. The Yuuzhan Vong were defeated, the galaxy slowly recovered under the Second Galactic Silver War, under another Sith Lord named Darth Cadus, the son of Han and Leia Solo. Now, Darth Cadus was unaware of Krait and his order. Cadus still followed Bane's Rule of Two, and Krait used the turbulent times the galaxy was going through as a distraction and deflection from his own activities, and thus, 
the new Sith Order remained hidden for a hundred years, as their power only grew. As he was still only human, Krait would subject himself to long periods of stasis, so he could survive through the long years. Though he was more powerful in the Force than ever, the implants that the Yuuzhan Vong had placed inside of him were slowly killing him, threatening to consume his entire body if he couldn't find a way of removing them. Number 9. Sabotaging the Peace A century after Luke's time, the galaxy was divided between the government the Imperial Remnant had become, still referring to themselves as the Empire, and the Galactic Alliance, the main galactic governing body that had replaced the New Republic after its collapse during the Yuuzhan Vong War. Darth Krait had been secretly engineering the downfall of the Galactic Alliance, while the Jedi and the remaining Yuuzhan Vong had worked to heal the galaxy from their devastating conflict, by using their combined technology to terraform and revive hundreds of worlds across the galaxy that had been destroyed during the Vong's invasion. This undertaking was called the Ossus Project, but Darth Krait had his minions sabotage the noble task with a virus that caused the terraforming to instead create a plague that mutated the environment and native population. Though the Jedi suspected foul play, they weren't sure, but they still defended the Yuuzhan Vong and pleaded with the Galactic Alliance to support them. But the Empire wanted retribution, and thus declared war on the Galactic Alliance. Facing many fronts, even within their own ranks, the Galactic Alliance was unable to hold their ground and were eventually forced to surrender, which was exactly the moment Krait had been waiting for. And finally, number 10. Emperor Krait. After the defeat of the Galactic Alliance, the Emperor, a Force-sensitive man named Ron Fell, ordered the Jedi to surrender. But the Jedi now knew that the Sith had been behind the whole war and therefore refused. Instead, they withdrew from Coruscant and set up their new temple on Ossus. Darth Krait dispatched several of the Sith Lords to attack the Jedi, which left most of them dead and their order broken, with the few remaining survivors scattered throughout the galaxy. Having removed the Jedi as an obstacle, Krait then led his forces against Emperor Ron Fell, killing the Sovereign and taking his throne. Darth Krait then declared himself the new Emperor. Krait and his new Sith Order had achieved what he had waited over a century for. The galaxy was his for the moment. Unknowingly to the Dark Lord, the Ron Fell he had struck down was actually a body double and the real Emperor had escaped, and there was a much more dangerous threat waiting for the Sith out there. A threat that would eventually lead to his defeat, for one of the few survivors of Ossus was a Jedi Padawan named Cade Skywalker. Hope you enjoyed this top 10 about Darth Krait, super interesting character, and he spans many, many years. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.